How the world of scientific research impacts us. Much of modern science, and modern life really, is reliant on computers. But is our dependence on them meaning we miss out on human ingenuity? Are our human problem-solving abilities being sidelined? Here's a great example. An international project to create an evolutionary map of the universe is getting underway in Australia using the world's most advanced new radio telescope. We currently know of some 2 million galaxies. This project, called EMU, is expected to discover many more and should dramatically improve our understanding of the universe. But it will require massive amounts of number crunching by machines. But there are some concerns that logical computers won't make the kind of serendipitous chance discoveries that have marked the history of science. Robert Coburn reports from inside the EMU Control Centre in Sydney as he chats to the project leader about that very real problem that they face and his chance discovery while studying ancient Aboriginal astronomy. This hiss that the radio telescope is hearing, some of that is coming from very close to the beginning of time. Professor Ray Norris is Chief Research Astronomer here at Australia's National Science Agency, the CSIRO. Well, this, this is where I work. I work at the edge of the universe. Norris leads the international project to make an evolutionary map of the universe from the start of time, called EMU. It's testing the world's most advanced new radio telescope, the CSIRO's ASCAP Pathfinder, with 36 radio dishes laid out in the West Australian desert each one with 192 receiving elements. Radio telescopes are always built with one receiver at the focus. And the really revolutionary thing about ASCAP is that there's 192 of them here. It's going to revolutionise the way we do radio astronomy. And this was all developed here in these labs in CSIRO. I got the first inside look at the EMU map project and the ASCAP telescope's control centre in Sydney. In the radio wavelengths, we currently know of about 2 million galaxies total. And... We expect to detect 70 million galaxies. 70 million objects like as big as the Milky Way. But there's a problem. Such vast quantities of data can only be analysed by computers now. But can a computer discover things the way humans do? By chance, an accident. Norris took us outside to the new telescope's test dish. Typically, big discoveries have been made by people look at the universe in a different way and they notice something odd. There's a danger that with next generation telescopes we'll be really good at answering the questions we've asked. We might be completely blind to the unexpected. Norris has another passion, recovering the ancient astronomy of Australia's Aboriginal people, some of it going back 50,000 years. He never dreamed ancient and modern astronomy would connect. By chance, the computer blind spot was highlighted as he tried to solve the mystery of an ancient Aboriginal ring just outside of Melbourne. Called Wordy Wang, it has 150 stones that line up precisely at sunset on Midsummer's Day and Midwinter's Day, the solstices. Nothing like it has ever been found in Australia before. No one can explain what is possibly one of the world's oldest astronomical instruments. I've had um, people from NASA, I've had um, astrologists, astronomers, I've had witches and warlocks and all, all walks of life, mate, I tell you. Reg Abrahams, the site's Aboriginal environmental manager. Professor Norris and his American colleague, Dr Dwayne Hamaker, used NASA laser equipment and ran 10,000 computer simulations of the site's construction to crack its design secret. The computer missed the obvious. The stones form an equilateral triangle, bisected into two 30, 60, 90 degree triangles along its axis. The geometry of Pythagoras, found in the Australian bush by tracking the sun. I spotted its design using my son's Oxford School geometry set. The stones are changing all understanding of Aboriginal people and the origins of science. But how did they miss such a familiar shape? And would the computer miss a discovery in the EMU map project? I think that's made me very aware of my own... the limitations of my brain as a human being. 
the scientists came to a stark conclusion about the effects of the computer age. It's something that's really struck me. I love the internet. I live on the web. But the trouble is that you end up using that as your brain <laughs> and you lose the capacity to memorise stuff. That must change the way you think. Aboriginal people had tremendous memorisation skills. Dwayne Hamaker researches Indigenous astronomy at the New South Wales University. One of his funders is Microsoft Research. They didn't expect this. We really don't have many memorization skills today. I mean, you just get on Google and the world knowledge is at your fingertips. And we just look it up on Google. We need now to develop software which is able to make discoveries. Software which can look for the unexpected in data. I actually have a name for the project. <laughs> you might want to edit out. It's got the product called WTF. <laughs> what, what, which stands for Wide Field Outlier Finder. Which could change the future of scientific research and our everyday computer lives. And what you're looking for is that one galaxy and you click the thing and WTF comes up on the screen. And what's the colloquial meaning? What the f <laughs> which is what you say when you find something. <laughs> and before you laugh, this is the same CSIRO department that gave the world Wi-Fi. Actually, one of the guys working on this is uh, John O'Sullivan, who invented Wi-Fi, basically. Two billion dollars in royalties. Will WTF give even more of our unique thinking skills to computers? So maybe WTF is the next big thing. I guess we'll find out in time. That report from Robert Coburn in Sydney.